Hey everybody, Saul, you asked about back pain and I'm gonna do you one better. You asked for stretches, I'm gonna give you stretches, mobility movements, and strengthening exercises so that you can start working on your lower back pain. So if you're someone who struggles with back issues, be it chronic or short term, in either case, these are gonna be some great exercises and things you can start doing to reduce and possibly even completely get rid of your back pain and get started playing better paintball. Let's get right to it. So I'm gonna show you a video, several videos actually, of what I did at the gym this morning to demonstrate some of the options out there. Now I've said before, no two coaches, and in this case, not even the same two physical therapists would probably ever write the exact same program if you went in and asked, what can I do for my back pain? That doesn't mean there's a bunch of people out there missing the mark. It just means that there's a lot of things that work and this is just one of the infinite possibilities that you can start doing. So let's get right in here. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is stretch and that is to mobilize tissues that are likely tight in your case. If you're dealing with chronic pain, there's a good chance something, probably many things are tight. So I'm laying down on my back here, lifting one leg and I'm extending it as far as I can until I feel a stretch in my hamstrings. Now I'm also pulling my foot back just to make sure I don't feel a sharp pain in my hamstring when the foot goes tight, meaning towards my uh, head and the hamstring goes tight. Um, if you do feel in the hamstring something kind of sharp happen when you pull your toe all the way towards your face, you have a nerve issue and that's a different thing but I'm just kind of uh, mobilizing my ankles here while stretching my hamstrings. So you wanna do this for 60 seconds total. It can be four sets of 15, one set of 30, but do it on both sides. Same with all these stretches. Um, up to 60 seconds total can be straight through. It can be in blocks of 15, 30, you get the idea. But this is a piriformis stretch. So we're basically uh, crossing one leg over the other, pulling everything to you, and we're trying to keep the knee that is on top of the other knee as far away from you as possible. So we don't want that knee coming up near our face. We want it as far away from us as possible. And I'm reaching through my leg, grabbing the knee that's farther and pulling it in towards me so that I can help stretch the leg that is up and folded. This is a really similar position, but it is different. Um, this is basically pigeon pose. You can look that up. Um, but it's a yoga movement and I'm basically stretching the glute here. So I'm no longer targeting the piriformis, which runs underneath the glutes. I'm targeting the glutes themselves. And this is actually gonna be less uh, important for stretching the glutes. The glutes themselves tend to not get real tight, but we tend to lose our ability to get the femur in this really high position in front of the body. So this is actually a really good way to just kind of get the body used to having our leg really up high. So uh, this here is a uh, hip flexor stretch. And so you're basically in a lunge position, turn away from the leg that is knee being kneeled on. So the knee that is down, reach up and then bend away from that leg. Again, we're looking for 60 seconds total. I'm abbreviating everything here for obvious reasons, but there's a good chance your hip flexors actually need to be strengthened more than they need to be stretched, but it is still important just to make sure you are making sure they're not under an excessive amount of tension. So let's move on to our next video here. So now I'm gonna do some mobility movements and this is not to stretch anything, it's to get things moving. So in this case, the spine itself. So this is a cat-cow transition. So I'm basically trying to create here a arch as low to the ground as I can and here as arch as high of I, as I can towards the ceiling. So I'm just doing the opposite back and forth, back and forth. Try to hump my back up towards the ceiling and then slump my back, uh, let my belly button sink to the ground as much as possible. And this is gonna help each individual vertebrae inside your spine get used to moving. Um, this is a really good stability exercise once you've kind of got the spine looser, got it moving. The bird dog exercise, which is what this is called, is a really good one. I would actually recommend doing 10 reps on each side and working out to where you can do 20 nonstop with as little uh, movement side to side as possible, losing your balance as little as possible. And you have opposite limbs going out. So your left leg is going out while your right arm is going out and then you're switching. Um, 
Here we're going to spread the legs and sink back. Again, this is a way to mobilize the hips, kind of get them in a position they don't often get into when we're sedentary and stiff. But I'm taking child's pose a step further by leaning side to side. So I'm stretching the lat on each side. The lats connect to the, uh, what's it called? The lumbothoraco fascia, uh, basically a web of tight tissue in your lower back. So stretching your lats actually has a direct connection to loosening up your lower back. I'm gonna inchworm up here. That's a good exercise. You don't need to do it, but I just wanna do it because I've got some deadlifts coming in this workout. So I wanted to stretch my hamstrings as much as possible. So those are really good ways to start stretching and start mobilizing with probably very little likelihood of exacerbating any issues. Now, once you can do those with no problem and you're ready to start adding an additional stress, strengthening things, then you're gonna to wanna to go to this next exercise. So this is the back extension machine and I'm adjusting it so that it is supporting my hip bones. Now, if you need more support, you can raise it higher and have it support your stomach, but keep in mind that might make it a little bit difficult to breathe, but nearly every gym has one of these. So this should be a really easy thing for most of you to go and do, but you're not gonna focus on moving at all. You're just gonna hold the back extension. So if you can imagine the support is right here on your hip, you're just working on keeping your spine at a 45 degree ish angle. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm showing you here that you can increase the difficulty by changing where your arms are. So again, if your arms are kind of like behind the pad, like I had them behind my back at first, that's less weight on your spine. And if you move your arms further and further out, that's more and more stress that's going uh, around your hips because the weight's being moved further and further so the leverage is increasing. So that's a way to increase the difficulty without actually adding any weight to this exercise. But work up to where you can hold the back extension position. Body's nice and straight, but again, it is leaning at a 45 degree angle for about a minute. So once you can get to a minute, we'll move on to the next step of your rehabilitation. So I haven't made any changes to the machine. I'm just getting on it here. So the pads in the exact same position, it's on my hip bones, but now I'm going to start leaning forward really slowly. I'm bending at the hip. So really the legs should look like nothing is happening, but above the hips, the spine and your neck and everything should all stay in line. And all of that should bend over without any bending, no curves, anything like that. Uh, I'm changing the angle of the machine here so you can see exactly what's happening, but it should basically look like nothing is happening in the legs. Yeah, my shorts are riding up a little bit because they're following uh, my body, but uh, you're basically bending over, trying to control the spine, make sure the spine stays perfectly in line and straight, but your hamstrings are what are allowing the upper body to lean forward and then the hamstrings are pulling the body back up. So this is kind of step number one when you're ready to start adding strengthening movement um, to your regimen. So this might take a month, could take more than a month, you know, two or three months for some of you, depending on where you're at, but start with those basics of just stretching every single day, um, preferably two to three times a day for up to 60 seconds. You're working up to where you're accumulating 60 seconds each time you stretch. Start doing some mobilization movements to get the joints themselves moving, bending, rather than just having the muscles around them stretched. Then start going and doing isometric movements, which means there's no movement. You're just holding your body under tension Again, working up to one minute, being able to hold the back extension. Once you can do a full minute with no issue, then start adding some movement, nice and slow, nice and easy, focusing on control so that your hamstrings and your whole neuromuscular system develop the ability to coordinate accurate movement from the hip. The hamstrings are guiding the entire lower body down while the spine stays nice and straight, and then the hamstrings are able to pull the body up. You do that literally thousands of times a day, bending at the hip. And so once your hamstrings are conditioned to do it properly, and your spine has developed the ability to keep itself perfectly stacked, where all the joints are in line, you're gonna be in such a good position to go the rest of your life with hopefully less and less back pain, eventually no back pain. 
Now, once you're ready to start adding some load, I am demoing here an RDL. So this, you don't have to pick up from the floor. I just happen to be doing deadlifts uh, in my workout. And so I'm already set up over here, but what you can do is set these up on the rack of a squat rack so that the arms, the support arms are higher around hip height, put the bar on those and then load the, the weights on the bar from there. That way all you have to do is grab the weight, uh, stand up, Hope, and you know the bar should come up a few inches you can back up and then all of a sudden you're in the start position that i will be in here in a second so i'm getting my feet basically directly under my hips so that my skeleton is very well stacked to support this weight granted it's lightweight i'm just demoing here but what we're doing is starting from the standing position this is as you can kind of tell really similar to the back extension exercise but now we're practicing what's more real life like which is holding weight in your hand and controlling the way you bend over. So imagine picking up groceries, uh, putting things down around the house. I don't know, you get the idea, but we're practicing bending over in situations that we do in daily life. So I am bending the knees a little bit. Um, that puts a little bit of slack in the hamstring so they're not under too much stress. Um, I am keeping the spine perfectly straight and in line the entire time. My shoulders are pulled back so that they're not sagging forward uh, that makes sure the shoulder blades are not being pulled away from the spine they're pulled back everything all the musculature around the back is nice and tight and this is something that you want to be able to do at least 10 times so don't use a weight that you can't do at least 10 times um, once you uh, you know can do 10 easy start adding more weight I'd start with maybe three or four sets of 10 where it kind of produces what feels like it's gonna make you sore for a day or two. And then next time you go, add more weight. Um, and it's okay if you maybe third or fourth set in or like, oh wow, I can only do seven or eight of these now. That's okay. But you should basically get at least two or three months of these RDLs in uh, working only around the 10, 10 rep range before you start going to like really heavy, what can I do that's maybe I can only do five times, three times, two times, one time. Um, at that point where you start getting, where you're adding weight and you're no longer able to do more than five, that's about the time you probably wanna start transitioning to a real deadlift, which requires more range of motion and it is going to be more difficult. Just because you've done a couple months of RDLs doesn't mean your back is going to be able to support you bending all the way down to the ground. So keep that in mind. That's kind of the next progression after the RDL is picking the weight off the ground. Um, so go back down and wait, start nice and easy. Don't assume your back is gonna be just fine the next morning. Um, I'd probably start with a weight similar to what you did in your first few weeks of RDLs, then practice picking that all the way up from the ground, standing up, going back down, again, focusing on form, uh, making sure your knees are bent so your hamstrings are not completely straight and stretched. Um, you're using your quads a little bit, bending your knees allows you to use your quads, which is gonna be very important. Um, and it's the way you want to do things in daily life, you know, use as much muscle as possible to spread the stress across the body and practice keeping the spine perfectly straight while it bends over. So don't get it confused. We want the spine straight even when it is bent over. What I'm saying is don't let the spine round like this or excessively round the other way, not where you're overarching your back. You want it just nice and straight. And if you want to know what that should feel like, stand against the wall, feel your the back of your head, your shoulders, and your butt all touching the wall at the same time. And then suck your abs in, brace your abs. That's what it should feel like. That's what a straight spine feels like. So I know that's a lot of information, but that should get all of you at least a few months in the process of rehabilitating your back. Now, if you want to work with me directly so that I can guide you every single day, be like, hey, this stretch just isn't really working, or man, that uh, workout really aggravated me. I need someone to kind of guide me a little bit more specifically on what's causing the issue, what's working, what's not, how can we scale things a little bit better, reach out to me and we can talk about working remotely. That's what I've been doing for years. Um, that's what I do for a lot of people as someone with a back stability specialty. So if you have a serious back issue and you want serious help, reach out to me and let's talk about working together remotely. I would love to do it. I've done it for a lot of people. It's a passion of mine to help people get over 
their chronic pain. Hopefully for a lot of you, this video gets you well on your way. Let me know how some of this goes. And if you have further questions that I didn't address in this video, I'm happy to hear them and happy to answer them. So thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And as always, play better paintball.